Welcome to Mouthpiece Theater, a complete helping of politics from two of the biggest maws in Washington. I'm Dana Milbank. And I'm Chris Eliza. In today's Curtain Racer, it's Judgment Day for Terry McAuliffe in Virginia, where late polls show the one-time frontrunner for the Democratic gubernatorial nomination may be slipping behind rival Cree deeds. McAuliffe, a former Democratic Party national chairman, has made a last-ditch attack on deeds saying he can't win in November because he already lost to Republican Bob McDonnell by all of 323 votes in the state attorney general's race back in 2005. Historians may find it strange to argue that somebody can't win an election if he has previously lost to that opponent because it would mean that we never would have had, say, a President Lincoln or a President Jackson or a President Cleveland or a President Jefferson. Students of more recent history may also note that McCullough's argument sounds familiar. It's the same one he and Hillary Clinton used last year to argue that Barack Obama could never defeat John McCain. But even if McCullough loses today, he has a history of not exactly embracing the agony of defeat. It was one year ago this week, on the night Clinton was mathematically eliminated from the Democratic presidential nomination, when McAuliffe got on stage and famously introduced her as the next President of the United States. Time now for a public service announcement. This thing kills reputations. The latest politician to learn this, Chuck Grassley, the 75-year-old Republican senator from Iowa who clearly has no business being on Twitter. When President Obama told lawmakers over the weekend that it's time to deliver on health reform, Grassley decided to send out a tweet but wound up signing like a twit. First he wrote, Prez Obama, you got nerve while you sightseeing in Paris to tell us time to deliver on health care. We still on schedule, even working weakened. He followed that with, Prez Obama, while you sightseeing in Paris, you said time to deliver on health care. When you are hammer, you think everything is nail. I'm no nail. Now, No Nail Grassley joins a long list of other pals who have embarrassed themselves with their tweets. To Grassley and the other Twitterers who continue to risk their careers by dashing off half-baked thoughts, we say WTF, LOL, and ROTFLMAO. Just when you thought we might go a couple of weeks without a Sarah Palin drama, you betcha, she's back in the news. There was the question of whether she would speak at last night's Gala Republican fundraising dinner. First, the party said she accepted an invitation to speak. Then her office said she didn't. Then she was invited again. Then she was disinvited. Finally, the Alaska governor let it be known that she was thinking of skipping the dinner entirely. She decided to go to the dinner without actually speaking. Presumably, that required her to communicate with people at her table using sign language. Meanwhile, Palin had no trouble accepting an invitation to appear on Sean Hannity's show on Fox News last night. There, she dispensed sound wisdom about the economy, telling Fox viewers that the Obama stimulus package, quote, defies any sensible economic policy that any of us ever learned through college. Palin knows what she's talking about in this area because she attended five colleges in six years. She went on to say, quote, it defies economy practices and principles that tell you you got to quit digging that hole when you're in that financial hole. On the other hand, if you keep digging that hole from Washington, you may eventually get to Russia and be able to see Putin rear his head. Putin rears his head and, and uh, comes into the airspace of the United States of America. Where, where do they go? It, it's Alaska. It's just right over the border. <laughs> Finally, today's encore goes to our friend Jackie Combs of the New York Times, who reported a particularly delicious nugget in her story about White House economic advisor Larry Summers. The abrasive Summers has offended people wherever he has worked, from the Clinton White House to Harvard University to the Obama White House. But at least he's self-aware. Combs reports that when his colleagues in the administration sang happy birthday to him on his 54th birthday, when they got to the for he's a jolly good fellow part, Summers instead sang for he's an unpleasant fellow. That's Mouthpiece Theater, and we're the Mouthpieces. See you on Friday.